Good morning, friends. We have been talking about wing loading, thrust loading, many understanding, formulation, historical train, etc. have been discussed. Today, I thought we'll take a simple example to see that how all those things can be made use of and how mechanically we should be able to do it to some extent. And you will soon see that once we do it mechanically, there is a time when we have to take a very serious call which will require a lot of understanding of overall performance of the airplane. Today I will be just uh, solving one example to estimate wing loading. This example is taken from Raymer's book. I am purposely following a uh, solved example so that you can go through it and you learn by reading more book rather than only listening to my lectures. I still do that and I will keep on doing because you never know there are many salient points which I may miss. I may not give that much of weightage to a particular interpretation which you may find it more important than I discuss. That is part of learning. A designer has to have that open mind. So coming back to wing loading, as we say, we need to have some mission requirement. Let's say V max is 130 knots. I'm using FPS. The old book of Raymer uses FPS. But you know that 30, 130 knots is roughly 65 meter per second. And let's say takeoff distance. is 1000 feet which is around 300 meters roughly then rate of climb one fifth or 1500 feet per minute let's say these three parameters we are using to calculate w by s and also it is given, which is another very important thing uh, any regulatory body gives you, the V stall limitation, it is not more than 50 knots. When you see V stall, we start thinking in terms of CL max. When you start thinking about CL max, I think about aerofoil and then I start checking from the aerofoil data, the CL max 2D. And in the process of visualizing, I have already taken an action on aspect ratio, will be between 6 to 8, something like that, for a particular type of aircraft. Because you have already done some calculation for getting W naught from the mission requirement. There also you have assumed some aspect ratio, right, based on ratio of weighted area and the reference area right okay typically at this point we need to take a call whether you are going to use any sophisticated high lift devices or not we are talking about v stall and when you are having this sort of emission requirement, you have already identified a baseline airplane. From that baseline airplane, let's say for this case, we only want to use a plane flap. Okay, so during conceptual case, you know, I will use a plane flap. This is more governed by the weight class, right? Because more weight means takeoff distance also will increase. So if you see historical data for this sort of a mission requirement where range is around 280 nautical miles. Seeing the historical data, we decided, okay, I'll use plane flap to start with. When I use a plane flap, I know the CL max 
should be around 1.4 to DCL max. And that also you understand that when you are talking about CL max uh, 2D and once I am putting the plane flap down, uh, it has both flapped and unflapped area. Without going much into how much is the flap size, because we have not done any flap size thing now as on today. We know if aspect ratio is around this, then the CL max I can approximate roughly equal to 0 0.9, 90 percent of CL max 2D. This is one first number you are, you are taking based on the overall experience. If that is true, then I know that CL max which I am going to use for restall will be 0.9 into let us say 1.4 and roughly let us say it is 1.2. I am giving some numbers, not exact numbers. The idea is how to use all those expressions which we have, have discussed. So, if CL max is 1.2, then I know for stall lift equal to half rho v square S C L max that equal to w. So, w by S stall, if I am to maintain that v stall should be less than 50 knots then I can say W by S stall should be less than or equal to half rho V square C L max. And let us say the density of air in FPS I am taking for a particular altitude is close to sea level. In fact, it is sea level. If I take rho equal to point 0, 0, 0,023 in FPS unit, V stall is 50 knots and rho is in FPS unit, it is 0 0.00238. So, I can directly use this W by S stall will be less than equal to half rho is 0 0.00238 half rho V square V is 50 knots, so I have to convert into feet per second. So, I multiply 50 into 1.689 to convert into feet per second into CL max, which is 1.2, and this will give you around 10.2 kg per sorry, 10.2 pounds per feet square. So, what is the message? Message is W by S stall should be less than equal to 10.2 pounds per feet square. If I want to maintain a V stall less than 50 knots, okay, right? 50 knots I am converting into feet per second multiplying by multiplication factor. Same thing if I want to get a feel in terms of kg per meter square is not difficult. So, what do I do? I know W by S, I am now doing in SI units equal to half, let us say it is C level. So, half a row is 1.225 into V square V is 50 knots, V stall 50 knots means roughly 25 meter per second. This is roughly 25 meter per second. So, half rho v square which is 25 into 25 into C L max is 1.2. So, that will give me W by S less than equal to um, around uh, 459 Newton per meter square which is equal to 46 roughly kg per meter square. Do you see this uh, and either you work in SI, whether you work in 
bound for fit square, this is the condition you get. I am doing in FPS unit because the examples are solved in FPS unit, but you should not get worried, you know how to convert them and get a field for number. So, this is W by S stall to maintain, to establish, satisfy the stall condition of V stall less than equal to 25 meter per second, I need to ensure W by S as 46 kg per meter square or 10.2 pound per feet square, assuming that CL max is 1.2, right? This is clear? Okay. And you could see here why I am writing less than equal to because this V stall is the maximum limit. V stall is less than equal to. In no case, V stall can be more than 50 knots. And why this sort of a condition is prescribed? Because I know takeoff speed as well as touchdown speed are some percentage more than V stall. So, V stall plays extremely important role. Okay. Then we come to second case takeoff distance. You remember for takeoff distance, there is one chart which gives you this is the takeoff parameter. And this is equal to W by S by sigma CL takeoff into HP by W for a propeller aircraft, or this is equal to W by S sigma CL takeoff into T by W for a jet driven airplane. And here it was takeoff distance. And we have seen with the chart, this number is around 100, uh, around 10 into 10 to the power 3,000 feet. It goes like this, you see that chart. And this number here is around 100. So if you, if you require 1,000 feet, you cross plot here because this is for 50 feet clearance and this is normal, that is ground roll. Okay, land roll or ground roll. We are looking more for 50 feet clearance because that is our takeoff distance. So I see what is the takeoff distance, 1,000 feet. I go here and try to drop a line and see what is the takeoff parameter. For this case, you will see that takeoff parameter will come out to be 120. It's purely mechanical. You have to see that chart. Okay. Takeoff parameter is 120, and that means what do I do now? I need to know what is CL takeoff because what I will do, I will write 120 equal to W by S by sigma CL takeoff into HP by W. We are solving this case for a propeller driven airplane. So I need to know what is CL takeoff and you all know V takeoff is taken as 1.1 V stall. So I can easily write CL takeoff is equal to CL max into V stall by V takeoff square which is equal to 1.2 by 1 by 1.1 square and this is equal to 0. 99. That is CL takeoff. This is clear. V takeoff equal to 1.1 V stall. I am mechanically putting these numbers here. So CL takeoff is CL max Vs by V takeoff square, which comes down to 0.99. And we know TOP takeoff parameter equal to W by S divided by sigma CL takeoff into HP by W. So, W by S equal to TOP into sigma into CL takeoff into HP by W. So, W by S, if I want to calculate for takeoff, I need to know the value of HP by W. Actually, power loading is W by HP. Now, what is that value I should take at a conceptual stage? As I told you, 
With your mission requirement, we need to identify a baseline airplane of that weight class, similar performance, same type of engine, properly driven engine, and through historical data, you will find for, for such airplane, the value of HP by W will be available to you. And for this case, what we do is W by S equal to 120 into 1 into CL takeoff 0.99 divided by 8. That is HP by W is 1 by 8. Power loading is defined at W by HP. But what we require here is HP by W. That value is what I put it here. And if I do that, then I get W by S equal to around 14. 0.9 pound per feet square or which is again less than equal to 72 roughly kg per meter square. This 8 you should not get confused. Please understand when you have identified the baseline aircraft there the W by HP which is defined as power loading is 8 for such similar aircraft. We are using HP by W so I put 1 by 8. Right. Generally, there are occasions where we commit this mistake. So, I, I am purposely making sure that you understand that there is every possible chance of just multiplying in reverse way in a reciprocal manner. You should be careful because thrust loading is defined as T by W, but power loading is defined as W by horsepower. Okay. That should be clear. Now, after takeoff distance, we come to climb. Okay, take off then climb. So the question is, what should be W by S for climb? Okay, we are looking for W by S, but you know very well that in during climb the T by W is most important. Right, T by W is decided by climb and take off. Right. Okay, so you'll see that when you are analyzing climb, how many information you get. So when you, once you are talking about climb, the first question will, will come to your mind, what is the climb speed? At what speed you want to climb? Again, let's say that is 70 knots, again based on type of airplane you are designing, which is roughly equal to 35 meters per second. Not a bad number, OK? And the problem is, when you're talking about climb, as it climbs, the density of air changes. So your, even if your climb speed is 70 knots, your dynamic pressure will change. Your density will change. So we'll calculate for one dynamic pressure. In fact, you should calculate for different, different dynamic pressure. And you will see that there will be variations. Right? So then you take a draw a matrix and try to find out. Just for an example, we are saying that we are trying to calculate The wing loading performance at a dynamic pressure, which is 16.6 pound per feet square, which is roughly equal to 81 kg per meter square. Let us see how to use it. We know G, which is the climb gradient is given by V vertical speed by the total speed and that is already written rate of climb we want how 1500 feet per minute that is that was the requirement so vertical velocity we have to convert into a particular unit consistent unit so I can write this as G equal to 1500 feet per minute base divided by 3.28 divided by 60 that will give mean meter per second. Right? Feet divided by 3.28 gives meter and minute divided by 60 gives seconds. So the value of G, okay, this is divided by, of course, we are getting G, V is 70 knots, which is roughly 35 meters per second. So I have calculated this G in 
SI unit. Please understand, I can do it in FPS unit as well, right? Just to make you comfortable, I will be switching off the units. It's nothing, it's just a question of multiplying or dividing by some factor. Understanding is that G is ratio of VV by total velocity V and I have put in appropriate unit and if I do that, I get the value of G as 0.212, okay? You could see that if I work it in FPS, if I work it in FPS, then how do I use it? G equal to vertical velocity in feet per second. This is one 1500 feet per minute. So 1500 feet per minute means divided by 60. Right? So this becomes 1500 feet per second divided by the total velocity V, which is 70 knots. 70 knots to feet per second, you have to multiply it by 1.6. 89, this also will give around 0.21. So whether you do in FPS or, you should be handy. When you are a designer, most of the data will be in FPS, unfortunately, right? That is why you need to be very conversant, right? Should not commit any conversion error. That's why I am purposefully, I am doing wherever possible, both in FPS and SI units, right? Okay? So if G is that, as I told you, when you do climb, T by W will be dominating the climb. So we need to know what is the T by W we are looking for. And you know T by W, I can write it as T by W equal to 550 HP by V, HP by W and V. Okay, and of course, you know, this is the horsepower at the brake, so you have to multiply by neta. So this expression is neta 550 HP by W divided by V. This is T by W. This is nothing new I am writing, so already we have explained earlier. So if I now put the value here, you could see T by W will be equal to neta if I take 0.8, which is not a bad number. The designer, you can always take eta 0.8. Generally, it is around that value will change. Then 550 into, let me write this, 0 0.8 into 550, correct? Then 70 to convert it into feet per second, 1.689. And HP by W, so I have to write it as 1 by 8. Okay? Because W by HP is 8, so I have to put HP by W, which is 1 by 8, and this gives me a value of T by W around, if I am not mistaken, point, zero point four six five. This is important, okay? This takes care of what speed you are climbing, what is efficiency, and what sort of power setting you have to do. So this is T by W for during climb. And also understand this, the thrust is going to change with altitude, W is going to change with altitude because some fuel is consumed. So as I told you, when you are talking in terms of T by W takeoff, you have to give all those corrections back, right? You have to bring back the corrections, which earlier you have told. But this gives you a pretty good number. And this will tell you, this will tell you for that climb, T by W is 0.465, no issues. And I need to know W by S, and that will be, to the, that we have already derived that relationship, T by W minus G plus minus under root T by W minus G whole square minus 4. C D naught by pi aspect ratio E divided by 2 Q pi aspect ratio E. Now as a designer, you will, you will have fairly good idea about AR aspect ratio. 
because you have done the initial weight estimate and you have assumed some value of aspect ratio. Next question will be how much E I should take? To initial conceptualize design, you can take E equal to 0.8, and I have been telling every time CD naught. 0 0.02 is a good number, very very stable to denote. Of course, it goes in third decimal, but at conceptual stage, you can always start with CD naught equal to 0 0.02, and you are calculating this as we agreed for dynamic pressure of around 16.6 pound per feet square. If you substitute all these things here, we can now all the numbers you know, T by W, you know, G, you know. CD naught, you know, aspect ratio, you know, then you get uh, for this calculation, let us say we have taken aspect ratio is equal to 6, and then you will find it should be less than equal to 62 pound per feet square, or less than equal to 33.3 kg per meter square. Please do yourself this calculation and conversion, uh, do not rely too much on me on conversion, you should do yourself and if there are mistakes you must tell me. But here as a designer, please see that this value depends upon aspect ratio. So, at this stage what you should do in an in a, in a, in a automated way, you should generate data for different value of aspect ratio for a particular CD naught. Then you generate this number for different combination of CD naught and aspect ratio. Okay. Similarly, for different combination of T by W, G, all those data should be available with you, so that you can select. So, creating a database and using the database rather than using all the time formula is the right way for a designer to get a feel. Okay. Do not leave everything to the computer, at least at the conceptual stage. Right. Then comes the most important thing. Cruise. Again, when you are cruising, you need to know at what altitude you are going to cruise and what will the cruise speed. Because the type of aircraft you are designing, uh, again, the baseline aircraft helps you uh, what is generally the cruise altitude. So, you have a rough idea of what sort of dynamic pressure you are going to fly. And let us say that dynamic pressure is 35 pound per feet square. You can generate numbers for various dynamic pressure. These calculations are demonstrated here to tell you how to use these expressions, right? A designer will generate values or crews at different, different dynamic pressure. Then he will check what is that altitude and what is that altitude at what speed I should fly so that drag is minimum. Sometimes that is not desirable because it may take longer time. So, what is the prescribed speed? So, all those things goes into the uh, design. Uh, instead of talking altitude and speed separately, we better to talk many a times in terms of dynamic pressure. Okay. So, this is the dynamic pressure and you know W by S from the cruise formulation is Q under root pi A R E into C D naught, which will be W by S cruise. Definitely it is coming because of one condition that I want, I am trying to get W by S for the best cruise. And if I put those number, I find 35 under root pi into aspect ratio 6, E I have taken 0 0.8, C D not have been 0 0.02. So, let us say this is equal to 20 pound per feet square or approximately equal to 107.5 kg per meter square. In wing loading, we many times create problem by writing, by actually getting the value is Newton per meter square and then writing it as kg per meter square. So, you have to multiply, divide by value of g, be careful in conversions. Right. So, what is, what has happened by mechanically using this or at least we know clearly the road map what I am getting that is important. Please see that whatever so many days we have been talking about wing loading, thrust loading, etcetera. One important thing we have realized here for a climb, the wing loading has a meaning provided you have pre-selected thrust loading. 
Because unless you have this, you cannot climb. Okay, that is the more dominating factor. So now what we are seeing, we are seeing the conditions, and I say W by S. If it is based on V stall, then the answer is wing loading requirement less than 10.2 pound per feet square. If I am satisfied, take off, then less than or equal to 14.9 pound per feet square. If it is satisfied, climb, then I know it should be less than 62 pound per feet square, roughly. And of course, you have to maintain T by W equal to 0.4 something, 0.46. Uh, let me put the exact number, 0.465. And if it is cruise, satisfy cruise, this is equal to 20 pound per feet square. So let me check whether the numbers are okay or not. For stall, I got 10.2 pound per feet square, right? For takeoff, it is 14.9 pound per feet square. For climb, uh, T by W 0.465 and W by C is 62 pound per feet square. For cruise, it is 20 pound per feet square. Now the question is, which W by S I should take? It is always fine for an aircraft if you general tendency, not always, that I like to have W by S as low as possible, meaning thereby that for a given weight, wing area is large, so I get a lifting will be easier, takeoff will be easier, but do not forget it will cause drag penalty, lot of skin friction drag. Then if large wing area, structural weight also may vary, it may go to a higher side sometimes. So then, how do I select? If I put the criteria, I take the lowest, then naturally out of this thing, this I will pick. Right? But if I pick this, I won't be able to satisfy cruise condition. Okay. So how do I handle such situation? So that will be my next class. Okay. And that is where from machinistic approach to a designer approach, it begins here only. Numbers will be there for different, different combination. And then you have to select, keeping all your mind that what finally you want. And those who are believing in optimization, they have to computerize it, automate it. They use those understanding as a part of algorithm. But at a conceptual stage, dear friend, software will not help you. Unless you understand, unless you know how to visualize and a feel for numbers, you can never be an engineer, a designer in particular, whatever software are given to you. So I'll be, that is why I'm putting a lot of stress in understanding, getting feel for numbers. Uh, I hope you appreciate it and you learn and build your own conceptual aircraft. Thank you very much.